Oh, hello everyone. Good morning or good afternoon. If there's any of our friends joining from the Southern Hemisphere, afternoon, evening. Uh, really warm welcome to, to all of you here joining in with the uh, uh, warmth of the community in the chat. And always so lovely to just uh, tune in to where uh, people are and quite a bit of what the external weather is like. Yeah. Of course, there's also the internal weather to take into account. And maybe we can just pause for a moment together and have a sense of welcoming that, whether it's our preference or not, having a sense of greeting what's present and relaxing with it, opening with it, inviting it uh, to be, inviting it to also go in its own time. Yeah, so, yeah, really lovely to be here and to be able to do that echoing from the external to the internal, from the uh, community yeah, to the internal community of uh, ourselves, of our own being. We were speaking about that in one of the sessions in the question and response, the sense of having a, you know, internal community as well, the different voices internally um, that are present and something that we notice when we practice uh, and something that we can um, learn how to work with. Yeah to work with skillfully. So yeah, jumped right in there <laughs> as we're still kind of getting our sense of the space and arriving. And I'll just maybe add before I continue with the reflection for this morning, yeah, my own welcome from Bridport and West Dorset, where I think I've seen at least one fellow uh, habitant of this lovely little town, and um, also express my gladness yeah, to be here with you all, the joy for this last uh, session of this week together. And as always, we'll have some reflection time, Dharma reflection, and then a guided practice and time for questions at the end. So over the days, um, we've been gradually opening to a wider field of our experience, uh, and we've just been kind of exploring these different ways of attuning um, to our experience. They definitely come together, they build on each other, but also um, we can apply them uh, separately from each other. Yeah. So we can have the sense of the pausing as we did just now at the beginning, uh, and the noticing uh, that's available at any time. We can also go directly to relaxing the body uh, and often that can support the pause. So it also goes in that direction. Uh, we can play with different ways of opening. So yesterday we opened to the particular um, way experience changes, how it's in constant and how it unfolds. Mm -hmm. uh, they, before we were opening to a very particular aspect of the range, the, just the opening to how sound um, appears and moves through. And so, um, yeah, we have this kind of, we have this range, we have these many little perspectives on experience that we can pick up and use. And it, you may notice that there's one of them that's more accessible to you, that's more um natural and available that you can pick up more easily and it's fine to work primarily with that. Yeah. So today I'd like to emphasize opening to um, this quality of listening 
to experience, which we're doing throughout, right? We're listening, you know, when we're pausing and noticing, we're listening. When we're inviting relaxation, we're listening. Um, when we're opening, we're listening. How much to open? What happens when we uh, open? So this quality of listening is quite broad. Um, and as we listen, our relationship to life is revealed. Yeah? And that, you know, opens up the possibilities of transformation and well-being that we're interested in. So we're kind of listening to know, to notice what's happening. We're listening to see what would be um, a helpful response. We're listening to see what our habitual responses are so that we can uh, know our own habits and also know how they impact experience. And as we do this, you know, more possibilities of transformation, more possibilities uh, of well-being open up. Uh, so as we're exploring and listening to experience in this way, you know, the curiosity, the interest, the kindness, this fresh way of looking that we've been cultivating, all of these are still present. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we're listening uh, in a way that is nourished by them and supporting these qualities to uh, to grow. Yeah, hopefully that that's clear. So sometimes, um, sometimes I think of our practice, uh, like listening to a wild creature. We could say sometimes we use this image of if if you wanted to see a wild creature, you'd go somewhere where it's likely to come, and you would be very still and very attentive to see if. It comes, yeah, to see if it appears. So that sense of listening, that sense of attentiveness, that sense of listening, um, of stillness in, in how we're paying attention. And we can bring that, yeah, or emphasize that in our uh, practice as well. I had an example of that a few days ago when we were out walking. Just going to pause a moment because someone said it was frozen. Okay. I wasn't sure there were no responses to that frozen comment. So I didn't know if it was frozen for everybody, but looks like it's not. So we're out walking and we're walking on a path along a field um, that had a fence, it had fence posts. And suddenly right in front of us, uh, a robin flew across the path and landed on one of the fence posts, which was really close. <laughs> it was about, I don't know, maybe less than a meter away, a lot less than a meter, close, closer to half a meter. And we both immediately paused, yeah, paused the conversation we were in, paused the mental activity, paused the body. Yeah, went into stillness, yeah, at this arrival, yeah, of this wild being so near to us, so close to us. And we paused and we relaxed, yeah, very naturally. And we attended to listen yeah, to this being, yeah, so close to us. Yeah. And so there can be a sense that we really emphasize this listening. One of my teachers used to say, listen on your toes. You know, when you listen to the Dharma, listen on your toes. Listen with that alertness and that presence. Also listening with our whole being. Yeah, so listening here, I'm using the word listening, even though mostly we were looking, the robin wasn't actually singing. But looking, yeah, with the eyes and the heart and the whole body, yeah? And that, you know, the reason I'm using listening because there's a receptivity to the listening, like the opening to that experience, this beautiful, wild being just there. And maybe you're getting a sense as we do that, um, more intimacy arises as we really listen, as we pause, as we're still and interested and curious, more intimacy and actually more contact. You can see, you know, more color, more shape, more size, more expression 
also in the robin's whole body. Yeah. I think the expression, you know, what's there. And also more possibilities of response, because as we listen similarly externally to something outside, also inside there's a listening. It has the same quality. It's very interesting. So more possibilities of response, the sense of, ah, this is beautiful. Well, you are beautiful. And the sense of don't be afraid. You're safe. You're safe here with us. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. We're using here the capacity to open our attention and to bring this richness to the attention. Like I said, listening or seeing, not just with the sense door, the eyes or the ears that we associate with that sense, but with the heart and with the whole being. Um, and so we're emphasizing listening in more ways, in more directions. And we can bring that also, um, it can be very obvious maybe to us how that happens with a bird. <laughs> That lands there, that, ah, that meeting with the wildness. But we can bring that same quality of intimacy, of contact, of appreciation to things that are less obviously beautiful. Yeah. So shortly after that, um, I would say darshan, you know, this comes from the Indian tradition, when you receive the, the um, blessing, the presence of the divine. <laughs> so that darshan from the the robin uh, offering us that experience. Uh, we walked into another field, which was just full of plants that had dried up, lots of different plants that had dried up. Um, and again, we might think, oh, they're just dry things. Yeah, They're past their beauty because they're brown, <laughs> actually many, many different shades of brown. But then we, we, with that quality of listening, as, with that receptivity, with that alertness and interest and curiosity we see beauty we see beauty and we spent a little while going around and kind of picking some of these dry plants you can see some of them behind me uh, not very well <laughs> on the shelf on the bookshelf there and bringing them home to beautify uh, our space so this listening in a receptive way that reveals more than we initially see, uh, that allows and supports intimacy, connection, contact with our experience. And that movement that we can see uh, from learning from our sense doors, listening or seeing externally and internally. Yeah, these two uh, movements that we can make and, and they're mutually nourishing. We can do that when we're in a conversation with someone. We can do that in our practice. Yeah. So something may arise in the practice that we don't know or it's, it's very subtle. Well, like here at night, uh, when I get at night, if I'm awake or when I get up very early, as I've been doing this week, I can just hear the tawny owls <laughs> from the hill that's not so close. Yeah. But it's very, very faint yeah, to listening to that, knowing it's there. And so as our, in our practice, we can bring that listening to, ah, where's the, where's the well-being here? Yeah, where's the well-being here? And listen for it, even when it's quite faint. Now we can uh, allow new things to arise or we can meet the distractions or the uh, more challenging aspects also with that sense of who are you? Yeah, Who are you? And can I just attend and listen to you right now? As we do this lessening reactivity uh, and nourishing more possibilities uh, and more uh, well-being as we do that. So let's practice. That was a long reflection. Apologies. Let's practice with this and we'll take our usual half hour to do it. So 
Noticing the body as you settle into the practice. Just checking in with the posture and taking time to attend to the posture. To make any attunements or adjustments that are needed so the body is as supported and stable and steady as possible. As we do that, the awareness already coming into the body and inviting it more fully and deeply into the body, already attuning to the curiosity, the care, and the listening as we do this, listening to the body as we attune the posture, as we invite the awareness more fully and more deeply into the space of the body. I will take a few moments to just ground and collect and settle the awareness and the attention in the body space. So grounding in a way that's helpful for you and also softening through the body and letting the awareness fill the space of the body. Expand through the space of the body. So we're receptive to this whole space. And within this wide, spacious awareness, open through the whole body, tuning in to the appropriate anchor for this period of practice, whether that's body, breath, or sound, something else. What's the anchor that feels most appropriate to be listening to, opening to.
Tuning to this quality of listening to the anchor, receiving the anchor. So it may be helpful to use the pause or relax to support this. Sometimes as we listen to something, we tense, and so the relaxing can be really helpful here. And the sense of opening the awareness. Interested and curious to listen to this moment in stillness. Allowing ourselves to come closer as we listen to the breath, the sound, or the body. Coming closer with a gentle interest. With a receptive curiosity. Just as we would wait for a wild creature to reveal itself. Just like we would pause and relax when a wild creature appears. This breath or sound, this body life, opening to it, listening to it, the whole being, the whole body. And this will be our practice. Let's explore it in silence for a while.
right now in this moment, listening to whatever is arising in experience, receiving it in interest, in curiosity and with gentleness, pausing, relaxing and opening to this moment of experience, whether distraction or anchor, listening, Gently and clearly, listening, meeting, deepening. If needed, making an intentional movement back to the anchor, you may find yourself already back. And then bringing that receptivity of attention. Listening to this breath, this sound, this body life over and over again, over and over again, what is revealed, what well-being is available in this simple yet profound attentiveness, the offering of attention.
in this moment also, listening deeply and deepening the listening to the anchor in attention to this moment of experience. And seeing in particular if we can listen, if we can receive any well-being that's available in this very moment, in the simplicity of listening to experience, of opening to it, relaxing with it, letting go into it. any well-being that's available, letting yourself rest as fully and deeply as you can with it and into it, soaking it in, letting it touch you and nourish your very being. We continue to bring this receptive quality of listening to the moment and mo- moment to moment unfolding of breath, of sound, of body, and particularly attuning, attending to any well being that's available, any beauty, any goodness that is revealed.
once more pausing. Relaxing. Opening. Listening. Listening deeply. Taking in your whole being. All the richness of this life being lived through this body, heart and mind. Also taking in, listening to the whole network of life lived within us, between us, around us. So as you practice listening for well-being, listening also to this web of life, we might hear it in external sounds or internal sounds. We might hear it in the knowing of others practicing with us right now across the globe. We might hear it in the knowing that birds are singing. Creatures are burrowing into the earth. Life is being lived in so many ways. And we are part of that. So for the last few minutes of the practice, As you breathe, as you hear sound, as you experience your body, listening to your place in this network of life, listening to this network of life within you, outside of you, weaving it all together. And in a moment when the bell rings, listening to that reminder that we can keep practicing, that we can keep listening to our own body, heart and mind and to life in all its forms.
So taking your time, no rush. Can we keep that interest, that curiosity, that receptivity uh, going? Seeing as we go through the day, if we can have that quality of listening to experience, whether broadly, generally, openly, or listening to a particular thing like we were doing in the second half of the meditation, listening for well-being, listening for kindness, listening for generosity yeah, in ourselves and in the environment, listening for interconnection like we we're doing right there at the end. Yeah, so there's a lot that we can do um, in this practice. Um, and so in a moment, we'll open to questions. Uh, you can do that in two ways. You can put your question in the chat. If you do that, please um, begin the chat message with question written in capitals. Um, or you can use the raised hand function and then um, we will do our best to bring you on screen uh, so that we can see and hear you asking your question. Before we move into the questions, a few words about Dana dana practice as you all know i think being here these sessions are offered in the spirit of dana freely offered without a ticket price without a fixed price um kind of limiting who can be here and who can't so it's open to all, everyone and to all of us um and there's the invitation to participate in that offering through um financial dana yeah, you're already participating in other forms of dana through your presence yeah, and through the kind of nourishing of this community together. But there's also the possibility to support financially both Sangalai for all the work and all the costs of keeping the platform um, going and myself for the teaching. And we can bring this practice of listening to that, yeah, listening to what moves us listening to the flow of giving between us and listening to our own movement of generosity in whatever way uh, that can manifest with the particular conditions of each person's lives. So some of us are able to give more, some of us are able to give less. Um, the measure of our generosity is not the amount, uh, but that quality of presence and um, willingness uh, in, in the sharing. And so the link to the donate page is there in the chat. Thank you, Caroline. Um, you can click on it. You can copy it and save it for later. Um, you can go to the donate pages either on Sangha Live Connect or um, on sangalive.org. All right, let's see questions. All are welcome about anything we explored this week uh, or generally about your practice. And um, we had a raised hand. I'm not sure what's happening with that, but um, at the same time, we can also look at questions in the chat. Now to listen deeply and relax when there is sadness. Yeah, tips. Um, so, Sadness is such an interesting um, emotion. Uh, I think often, even without noticing, we have a bit of a, a, a kind of a sense of negativity. I think we're a little bit afraid of sadness. We're also um, sometimes kind of easily overwhelmed by it. So it really depends on the conditions that we're, we're um, within at a certain time in our lives. Um, but yeah, listening deeply to the sadness, but it may be skillful, yeah, to listen also to a sense of space around the sadness or what else is there with the sadness. May be skillful to listen to a quality of compassion there yeah, with the sadness. Yeah, so that we're not kind of getting sucked in and, and overwhelmed. Um, it may be interesting to listen to the nuance of the sadness. You know, what's there? What are the, how does it feel in the body? Yeah, what are the different shades or textures of it? 
Yeah, so skillfulness in the listening, whether we go more into it, we emphasize more the container of compassion within which it's held, or um, we listen to what else is there. Yeah, appreciation, gratitude, um, that might be there that can help us hold the sadness in a larger uh, space. So hopefully um, that's helpful for you. Um, with, uh, with, with that. And let me know, Amanda, uh, if that's helpful. And I see Jane is on screen. So let's see, Jane, if the mute on mute has worked today for you. I think it's worked. Uh, has it worked? If you start speaking, I'm, I'm going with Jane first, Jonathan. Okay. Uh, if, if it works for you, Jane, let's see. You need to start talking and then we'll, we'll see. Well, my microphone is showing as unmuted. No, you're still mute. Oh, sorry. I need to have my headphones. All right, go again. That was me. <laughs> my microphone is showing as unmuted. Yes, I can hear you. Oh, gosh. Wonderful. <laughs> well, I mainly wanted to come on screen to see if it could work because I've been trying for about four weeks. Yes. <laughs> to get on screen. So my original question was to Martin about four weeks ago. Um, and... It was quite tricky getting on screen. I got a, a sign saying invalid something for key site and I had to fill in a, a form to submit it. And then I came back and it came on. So I'm glad that it's working. Good. Um, just wanted to say hello and thanks so much for this week. Mm -hmm. And a couple of days ago, you um, suggested in the meditation that to focus on sound. And I usually focus just on breath. Uh, and at the time when you suggested it, there was a really high, fierce wind here. Mm. So it was quite exciting to focus on sound. But what I noticed was that when you say to, to like the breath or the body or sound, whichever one of those I'm doing, which is usually breath, I'm completely aware of the others as well. Mm -hmm. And does that mean that I'm not focusing enough on one of those yeah yeah great question thank you um it, it a little bit depends how we're practicing um and so the, there can be a, a range of options um sometimes and it sounds like this is what you're doing um we use a particular anchor yeah for the practice um but our intention isn't for the focus to be very limited yeah so we're not trying to shut out everything else yeah so we might be focusing on the breath like you are that's the main anchor but we're still aware that you know there's body life going on there's sounds going on uh there's um thoughts going on you know uh, that can all be there um, but it's not the primary focus. Yeah. It's like, uh, we could say, um, we can see it sometimes very clearly with the vision. There's a, um, you know, the, the, the kind of what's in the center of our vision. And then there's the peripheral vision. Yeah. So right now, you know, I use this example sometimes. I might be looking at my screen. That's what I'm primarily interested in. But I see, I have peripheral vision of everything around the screen. Yeah. It might be the entire room. Uh, and that, for most of us, that's a really useful and skillful way of practicing most of the time. So not, not, not trying to kind of erase, blank out everything else, but actually just being clear about, ah, this is the anchor and that supports me to gather rather than to get caught up in, you know, whatever's arising. Um, so if we use that as the kind of um, base for our practice, then we can see that we can also go uh, along a spectrum. So we might sometimes have a completely open awareness that doesn't even have a primary um, object, but the, actually the, the, the practice is being aware of whatever is arising in awareness at the time. Yeah, so that would be kind of a more open sense that I'm just saying it to kind of draw the whole range. And it may be that it's sometimes we, we were trying to cultivate a particular um, quality or way of being or aspect of our practice. And so then we're really focusing uh, more on something and letting everything else go uh, more and more into the background, recede more and more into the background. Or we can say get more and more quiet. 
Yeah. Uh, but I would say for most of us, most of the time, that there are other ways of teaching. Yeah, you may hear different responses from other teachers. It's not so helpful to, to have a very narrow focus and to try to blank everything else out. Yeah. Uh, but to have a sense of we're moving along this range uh, with, with the object, the anchor of attention, moving from more prominent to more open. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that may change within one meditation also, but it also is very much to do with our intention of what we're cultivating at a particular time. Mm. Does that respond to you? Yes, thank you. I don't have a sense of um, of the sound and the body being peripheral so much, mm. but, but what mm. does happen when I focus on my breath is my breath gets... Um, gets so small and shallow yeah. that I'm not even sure that I'm breathing. I mean, I am yeah. if I really pay attention, but it's almost like I've gone into suspended animation. Yes. Yeah. And then, I, so so this is really interesting um, because what happens sometimes as we're practicing, yeah, and uh, it does, it happens a lot with breath. It's quite clear with the breath. As the mind gets more quiet, yeah, and actually as attention gets more refined, the breath also gets more refined, yeah. So the breath, yeah, this is, <laughs> we're kind of in, 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 in really interesting territory. The breath gets more refined because the attention is getting more refined. And there's, the attention gets more refined because there's less going on. There's less activation. So the breath gets more subtle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, as you say, very shallow. And I'm not even sure. Am I still breathing? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say if then the mind goes to other things because they're more coarse. I would say stay with the subtlety and basically what needs to happen is then attention needs to get more subtle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have this process. We see how our experience is constructed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's, um, the, the, the attention gets more subtle, then the breath gets more subtle. The object gets more, the object gets more subtle. The attention needs to get more subtle and we go into more and more subtlety, more and more subtlety as we do that. And that's an exploration. Like, I know you want to ask me, how do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> how do I get, but you know how to do that because it's already happening. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's an exploration. Yeah. It's not, it's some, it's somewhere where language becomes very limited to explain how do we make the attention more refined, um, or more subtle. Um, but that's happening through practice. Keep doing what you're doing and just have that in mind. Okay. The breath is getting more subtle. It's a more subtle object, more difficult for the attention to attend, to stay with. But there is a possibility of that. And what needs to happen is the attention to get more refined as well. So a lot of patience, a lot of interest there. Yeah, gentleness and see what, what, what unfolds. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Um, I'm aware we've reached our time. And actually, I can hear that <laughs> um, someone's come to look at our boiler. Um, but hopefully Nathan's keeping him entertained for a few minutes while I just um, I'll just try and answer Jonathan's question briefly. Um, and uh, before I do, just to say, if you need to leave, then thank you for being here. And um, go well with your practice. I'm looking forward to seeing you again here uh, sometime soon. Um, and um, yeah, really appreciate your presence, your practice, all of you here. Um, but I will respond to Jonathan's question briefly. Um, so yeah, uh, you're asking about, you know, the, the image there. Use it if it's helpful. Yeah. Use the image of listening to experience like you would listen to a wild bird. Yeah. Um, but don't get too caught up in that imagery. Yeah. To create a narrative around it. Um, so you're asking around, um, what if there is trauma in the system? And I would just kind of separate those two. I hope that's clear what I'm doing there. Um, so um, if if there's trauma in the system and that's what's arising, it won't always arise. Yeah, sometimes trauma is activated, sometimes it's not. Um, 
you know, attend to your experience in ways that are wholesome with that, yeah, with that aspect of experience. And when distress, if distress arises, if activation arises, then use regulation, use the breath to regulate deep breathing or open the space or do walking practice, yeah, with eyes open, you know, use these particular ways of practicing that are really supportive with uh, with a traumatic response. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't kind of uh, and blend that in to the sense of, yeah, I was aware when I was using that wild animal that, that that's where it could take us. So decoupling that connection um, and, you know, working with the trauma in ways that are helpful to work with the trauma uh, and working with the practice in a, what we would call a trauma sensitive or trauma informed way. So I hope that responds to you, Jonathan. I apologize. I do need to go because the boiler is in this room. I didn't say that. <laughs> so the boiler is in this room and the engineer needs to uh, get to it. Uh, he's come a few minutes early. Yes. So take care, everyone. Uh, go well. It's been lovely to be here with you um, this week. And um, I will see you soon. I think Nathan will be here next week to offer some of these wonderful sessions. Go well.